Hi there, my name is MC Yoda and welcome to my hardcore series where you get to choose my fate. That's right, much like a choose your own adventure book, you, the viewer, gets to choose how I proceed from episode to episode. A lot of great suggestions came in this episode and I have a lot to do today. So let's waste no time and get right into this episode. I had to do a few things off camera to prep for today's episode. Like I went ahead and started farming some wheat so that I could breed up these mushrooms and get a whole bunch of leather to max out this enchanting table. I also created the road going that way over to the Westland so that I could gather some resources, including these grass blocks and a few sheep so that I could make some wool that I'm gonna need for a project today. I also started farming a little bit of bamboo so that I can make bamboo blocks and start making planks that I'm going to need. I even went down to the strip mine and mined up a few more resources, especially these three diamonds, which I'm going to use to make another pickaxe. The reason why is that I saw that Fortune 3 was lined up in this enchanting table. So let's go ahead and get us a Fortune 3 diamond pickaxe and hope that it comes with some unbreaking and efficiency. Oh yes, it couldn't be any better than that. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Now let's see how many more diamonds that got us. Nice, seven more. Fantastic. Now one of the first and easiest things on the agenda today is to name my horse from last episode. I got several really good ideas for that name, but I'm not gonna be able to do it quite yet. The reason why is that I only have about 27 iron left, which is not enough to make a new anvil. And the current anvil that I have is in the damaged state. So let me give you a quick lesson on what that means. I'm gonna use andesite to demonstrate this, so let's pretend that this full block of andesite is a brand new anvil. Now every time you use this anvil, there's a 12% chance that it's going to become chipped. And, and, if you, and if you're unlucky and roll that 12%, it will become chipped. Now every time you use a chipped anvil, there is a 12% chance that it's going to become damaged. And we'll use the slab to represent the damaged anvil. And now every time you use a damaged anvil, there's a 12% chance that it's going to be destroyed completely. Boom. So once an anvil is in the damaged state, the next time you use the anvil could be the last time you use it. I mean, you could luck out and get several more uses out of it, but there is the chance that it will be the last. And since I don't have enough iron yet to replace an anvil if it does break, I don't want to risk breaking it quite yet. So we will name that horse a little bit later in the episode. Now, one of the suggestions that came in was from Zinkberg, and this suggestion was seconded by Kirtiana. And Zinkberg says that he wants me to sell seashells on the seashore. But before I can sell the seashells on the seashore, first I have to build a seashell shop. Once I build a seashell shop, then I can go ahead and start selling the seashells on the seashore. So I'm thinking the first thing I'm going to do this episode is build that seashell shop so that I can get to selling me some seashells. I'm sure you didn't think I'd be able to do that, did you? <laughs> and I promise that was all done on the first take. <clears throat> so to build the shop, I'm going to need a few things. I'm going to need some oak, uh, some bamboo blocks, probably some spruce. I'm gonna need sticks. I'm gonna need some of that wool that I prepared. A few leather, the seashells, probably some more sticks, a loom, which I crafted earlier, some copper, and I think that's about it. All right, so me and this unnamed horse now, I think we're gonna go over there to the Westlands and build this seashell shop. Seashell, seashell, sea, she, ugh. Okay, well we are over here at the Westland seashore, and I think this might be a nice place to set up the shop. It's a kind of a pretty open beach right here. We got the ocean going out this way. I think this is a nice spot. We even have some potential customers right over here. Shop's not open yet, guys. Stay there. Okay, well, I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing built and I'll be right back with you. Okay, and there we have it. A seashell shop on the seashore. I think this turned out pretty cute. I wanted to use some nice uh, kind of beach colors. I think the pink and the light blue and the white stripes, I think that works out pretty well for that. In fact, I think I used to have a beach towel that was those exact colors. <laughs> we got a little tiki torch out here, another one out here to tie the horse up to. And we even have little seashell banners here. These were a design I found online. I am not creative enough to come up with that on my own. <laughs> and here we have some of the seashells on display. So I am open for business and ready to start selling some seashells by the seashore. Thanks, Zinc, that was a great suggestion. Okay, well, it's starting to look like this area is getting a little bit crowded, so let's go ahead and get back to the base and move on to the next project. Okay, so our next project for today was another suggestion by Zinkberg, and this one was also seconded by Kirtiana and Lucky Lane, and that is to build a second mine entrance in a bottle. So this is a really good idea, and I'll show you why. Our current mine entrance goes all the way down to diamond level and does not stop up here in the shallow levels where we can actually mine for iron and coal. And this is all the iron I own, 21. Not even enough to replace an anvil if it breaks. 
So we're gonna build another bottle up here on the seabed and this one's gonna house a mine entrance and this mine entrance is gonna be a shallow one down here at the level where we can actually find iron and coal. And the project is already done. Yeah, I, I did all of this and I completely forgot to hit record while I was doing it. But, uh, but you get to see the finished product. So here's our mine entrance right here. So for this one, I laid the bottle down on its side and I even kind of buried part of it in the gravel. And I did that mainly so that it would feel a little bit more, more natural with this cave entrance going straight into the ground. Uh, this one also has a little neck and cork on it right here. And the entrance into it is on the back side of it right back here. So let me show you the mine entrance. It's kind of a nice little outcropping of rock. Um, I got this oak beam up here holding up the stone and you can see that this corner here is a little bit broken and, and we had to reinforce that there to make sure that the beam would hold up. Uh, it's got the a few necessary tools here, a crafting bench, a stone cutter, and a chest. And around back here, we even have a nice little campfire and some seats so we can sit down and keep our feet warm. Okay, so I started digging down a little bit, so I'm trying to decide how deep I should go. Because if we look at the ocean, right, it's, it's, it's one layer of gravel and then it goes into stone. But if we kind of zoom out here a little bit, uh, let's see, it does go down. Like, like there's a bit here that we're going to have to deal with. So we probably want to get low enough to get below that. But then after that, there's no real deep uh, gorges, right? So I think once we get past this, and this is about level, what's that, about 42? So I think we can just go down a few blocks here and be able to get underneath that. But the thing is now with iron and coal, the deeper you go, the harder it is to find. So it's kind of a payoff. You want to get, I want to get deep below those uh, problem areas, but I don't want to get too deep to where I can't find any iron anymore. So I think I'm going to run back up to the starter ship and grab some mining materials. And I'm going to do a little bit of mining here off camera. Well, I think I'll keep the camera rolling just in case something interesting happens. But if nothing interesting happens, then I'll just meet you back up here at the top of the mine once I'm done. Okay, this is becoming a little bit of a problem. I'm still a little too close to this to the water surface and I keep breaching the water whenever I go down these tunnels and I'm at Y38 and I've already been through two iron pickaxes uh, one of them's almost dead and I've only found seven iron this whole time now I did find plenty of coal and I actually did find a copper vein which might be interesting for the future but I'm just not finding iron you know they really have made it a little too difficult to mine for ores and I kind of wish they didn't do that so if I want to find iron, I'm going to have to go find somewhere that's on land that has hills or mountains and actually mine inside those. Because at this point, I'm just kind of wasting my time and wasting my iron trying to find it down at this level. Okay, enough of that negativity. <laughs> Let's move on to something else. Okay, I noticed our wood axe is almost dead here. It only has 58 durability left. And we do have a few more diamonds. So let's go ahead and make a new axe. Okay, there we go. And let's just see what's available on the enchanting table right now. So we can get Unbreaking 3 on an axe. That would be pretty nice. Hmm, I do need three more levels though. All right, let's break down some of this coal I just dug up and see how many levels we can get out of it. Okay, that only got us to about 28 and a half. Let's see, I can get a couple XP off of these guys. Okay, maybe I can get a few XP off of these too. Those are harder to target because they're not swimming around. I can get some XP for cooking up some more kelp for fuel. You know, I do have a few nether ore blocks here. Let me see if I can get some XP out of these. Ah, oh, so close, so close. Almost there. All right, matey, how should I get these last few XP? I think fishing is going to get it for me. Ah, there we go, level 30. I really need an XP farm. Okay, let's see what's going to come along with this unbreaking three on this axe. Something good, something good. Well, don't really need silk touch on, the, on an axe, but okay, better than nothing. Okay, so now it's time to deal with this little messy floating island here. We have several people who want me to turn this into a farming island. Uh, a couple from last episode, Paul Lowicki and Shruikan. And also from this episode, we got Tony Garces and Kirtiana joining the effort here to get this turned into something useful. Now, as far as what to do with this, we had several ideas. A Shruikan wanted it to look like a real island. A Paul Lowicki wanted me to perhaps spread it out like small islands, one for each type of crop. Tony Garces was thinking that a floating raft with wood and a big flag would look pretty awesome. 
but I think the one I'm gonna go with came from Kirtiana, and that suggestion was to make it look like a Nautilus shell. That's a cool idea. So I was already kind of envisioning this being kind of a flat island, so not really like a built up real island, because that would just take way too many resources. But I was already thinking of something that would be flat and sectioned off. So I probably could have worked the raft idea into that. But a Nautilus shell? A Nautilus shell? That's perfect. Absolutely perfect. So I planned out something in creative on, on what kind of shape I would need to do that. And it took me a while, but I think I got something that looks pretty decent. And this is going to take over a chest full of dirt and like five stacks of slabs. But before we do that, I first have to tear down this existing island and get these sheep and this horse somewhere safe and then get to building. Okay, well I have finished building this platform over here before I show it to you. I relocated my horse and my sheep over there to where the uh, northbound road and the westbound road cross. And over here now is our farming island. And from this view, it doesn't look like much. It just kind of looks like a pancake. But when I go up into the air, this is going to be really cool. Watch this. Look at that. <laughs> That is almost passable as a Nautilus shell. <laughs> and I know the proportions, you know, it doesn't grow in size this, at the same rate that a Nautilus shell does, but it kind of gets the, gets the similar pattern. And it keeps most of this area to where the farmland will be hydrated. So yeah, check that out. And the way I positioned it, I positioned it the way I did because I figured if, if I have reason to expand it, we can go all the way out this way and around and wrap it all the way around to here without covering up any of these bottles. Of course, I think this is gonna plant plenty of crops and we most likely won't need any more space than this for farming. All right, now I've got a few things planted. I decided to use this area for trees as well because it kind of made sense I have enough space for now. So let me show you what it looks like up here. It's starting to fill in pretty nicely. I mean, it looks a little weird with like short things in the middle and really tall things on the outside. But as I find more things to farm, we can always rearrange how things are laid out. But yeah, I think once all of these are grown, it's gonna look kind of cool as it is right now. But yeah, this was a pretty awesome idea. I love it. That is uh, very unique. And, uh, and it definitely fits the theme out here in the ocean. Well, that's been an awful lot of building so far this episode. There was a suggestion or two that involves some adventure. And I kind of feel like I want to do that. The building is a lot of fun, but it's also very time consuming and a bit tedious. I want to go out there and stretch my legs and swing my sword and see what's out there. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take Sammy's suggestion. And that was for me to go find a jungle and get a parrot because of course, every boat captain needs a parrot. So I think that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to go sail out in one of these other directions and see if we can't find ourselves a jungle. Okay, before we go, let me grab a few things. I'm going to need some seeds to tame a parrot if I find one. I'm also going to bring some raw fish because if we find a village, I think I might want to try to tame some cats and bring them back because there is a suggestion on the board for us to make a creeper farm and those will come in handy. I'm also going to bring this brush because ever since the first episode, we have been looking for a warm ocean so we can get a sniffer egg for Vaud's suggestion. And I'm going to bring a bucket of milk just in case, you never know. And let me bring a lead just in case I need to tow a cat around with me. Ahoy me matey, you hold down the ship. I'll be back. Okay, so here is our map where we're at. Oh, wow, that Nautilus shell looks really good on here. <laughs> that is fantastic. I love it. All right, so let's see where we're at. So we have been to the Northlands up here where we've got some plains and some forests. We can see that there's a whole bunch of ice stuff going on over here and some spruce forests. And over here in the Westlands, we got some more plains going. And it looks like some maybe some rocky mountains. You know, that could potentially be a good spot where I could be mining for some iron. So I have two options. I could go east or I could go south to start looking for some jungles. I think... Uh, I think I'm going to go east. All right, so east is that way. And then, of course, it's right across our little bridge here. Yeah, I'm going to have to figure out a way around that eventually. Because if I came back with a whole uh, chest boat full of stuff, that would not be cool. 
All right, there is land coming into view, and it does not look... You gotta be kidding me. A jungle? Really? <laughs> oh my god, it's like a jungle and looks like a dark forest. <laughs> okay, I swear I did not know this was over here. This looks like I planned it. I, I, I see how... I know how that looks. Oh, wow, let's take a look at this land right here. So we've got... We've got kind of spots of jungle. Again, I don't know if this is going to have parrots in it. We've got jungle mixed with a tiny little bit of dark forest with one of these like snowy mountains and a birch forest. Oh my God, this is like how many biomes just all smooshed into one little spot? Uh oh, look at that. <laughs> There's even the um, cherry grove over there. Holy cow, Eastland is amazing. Now, aren't those mountains the kind that usually have the deep dark underneath them? Hmm. Yeah, these little sparse jungles don't really have much, do they? Hmm, I'm having trouble finding me a parrot. Well, already it's looking like it's a little bit more dense, so maybe this is a real jungle. All right, let's shore up here and let's see if we can find us a parrot. Whoa. There's a big old ravine right there. Neat. Hey, you're not a parrot. <laughs> hmm, this was a pretty decent sized jungle and I've been through what feels like the whole thing and I haven't seen one single, well, a parrot or an ocelot, none of the jungle animals. The only animals I've seen have been like cows and chickens where it was bordering another biome. Do you want to come home and live on a tiny little piece of land out in the middle of the ocean? Do you? Yeah, you do. Come on. Oh, can you not put a lead on a panda? Huh. Um. Okay. Okay. Um, well, you're not going to fit in that boat with me. All right, well, if you guys want me to come back and get him, I can come back with an empty boat. Alright, this is bumming me out. I cannot find a parrot in any of these jungles. Oh, there's a village right here, right behind this ship. Alright, let's take a look and see what they've got. Again, I brought some raw fish. I'm hoping I can find a cat or two to tame. Okay, there's a farmer. Whoa. What is that? Whoa, whoa, whoa. He's glowing. Are you okay, buddy? <gasps> whoa, whoa. Huh? Um. Uh, dude, I didn't do it. I hope you're not mad at me. I don't know what happened to him. Well, let me see if he's got anything worth stealing. <laughs> All right. Well, I have no idea what that was. Let's see what these guys have. Oh. Okay, he's doing it too. Oh, so is he. Um. Oh my. There's another one. Uh, dude, you might want to stay away from me. Um. Oh boy. Okay, let me try this out. <laughs> oh my, what perfect timing for the sky to go dark and the rain to fall. Uh, wow, yeah, I feel like, I, I feel like I'm the plague bearer here. <laughs> yes, yes. You. Oh. <laughs> become death, the destroyer of worlds. <laughs> okay, let me explain what just happened there. 
This was a restriction I actually added to the game using a command block. And basically, this restriction is going to prevent me from using any villagers to get any quick access to any good loot. So I can't use villagers to make iron farms for infinite iron. I can't use them to get all the best enchantments or all the diamond gear. And I can't use them to get, you know, infinite golden carrots or anything else. It's actually the one restriction I wanted to give myself for this game, and it just wasn't relevant until now. So for this series, I cannot use villagers. So all those things the villagers give you, I'm gonna have to get them the hard way. Now, I did see a cat walk by here a moment ago, so I'm gonna try to see if I can tame him. I got him on a lead, okay, so maybe I can get him to sit still. There we go. Get, get your head out of the dirt. Get, get your head out of the dirt. Okay, well, I think I'm gonna head back home. Uh, we didn't find a parrot, but I did find quite a lot of stuff. I found three new types of wood with saplings, found four diamonds, we got potatoes, we got a kitty cat, and our inventory is pretty much full. So let's take this little kitty back home and see what's next on the agenda. Okay, you know what, kitty? You're just a little too loud to have hanging out at home. The dog is barking a little bit, but um, he's not as loud. You can hang out here and, and make sure no creepers come by and bother our farm. Does that sound like a good idea to you? Don't look sad. Don't make those sad noises. You're making me feel bad. Well, you'll like it up here. You get some fresh air. You get to watch the fish. You'll enjoy it. Trust me. There is one more adventure I need to go on this episode, and this was suggested by Milliecraft. Well, the adventure wasn't so much the suggestion, but the result of it was. See, Milliecraft wants me to start brewing potions with the very honorable reason that it's going to help me building things underwater, it's going to help me conquer those monuments. Uh, brewing is just really going to help me in many, many ways. But to do brewing, I have to find another fortress. Yeah, another fortress. Okay, well anybody who knows me knows that my least favorite place in this game is the nether. But once again, you guys are calling the shots, so I'm going to have to go in there, find a fortress, hopefully get some blaze rods and some nether wart so we can get the brewing started. Okay, well here I am in the nether, and let me just uh, get myself to a safe spot so we can have a little chat. Okay, so here is my map of the nether. So I was trying to think, where am I going to go to find a nether fortress? How am I going to tackle this? And the first thing I noticed on the map is that right down here, this structure right here looks like a bastion. So now, <laughs> that's absolutely not where I want to go right now, but just so you know, that is there. And that might be something we'll have to check out in the future. And as I was kind of taking a look at my surrounding area, I did notice right down here in the corner that there was some kind of straight, these look like nether fortress hallways to me. Or I should say a bridge over the lava. So I'm thinking that is going to be our best bet. We're probably going to have to go down this way, which is to the southeast. And um, that's a definitely a few hundred blocks, so not terribly far away, but this is the nether. And even things that are close can lead for a pretty dangerous trip. And of course, Southeast takes us right over <laughs> this first obstacle. Oh, lovely. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. Don't break my portal. Where are you shut? Where are you coming from? Oh, where there he is. Oh. Oh, I thought I was going to hit that. Okay, why am I not punching those? <laughs> okay, for now I'm just gonna build a moss wall so they can't see me, because I really don't need to deal with these gas, especially if I can't shoot them from here. You know, I might try to get these, because um, if I'm gonna be brewing potions, uh, fire resistance is absolutely one that I'm gonna need. Oh, and they both jump down into the lava. Hmm. Well, there's a baby one over here. Let's see if he's got... Nope, he didn't get it. Okay, so there's the fortress right over there can see that and I'm thinking I'm gonna have to use one of these striders to get across to it now I did think to bring a warped fungus on a stick with me and a saddle so I'm hoping I can get one of these guys over here now how do you get them can you lure them over oh boy this is a sight to see <laughs> Woo, almost walk right into that lava thank you for the ride sir so now I need to get up there Okay, we are in the fortress. So the main thing we need is to find nether wart and a few blaze rods. Oh, well, there's a blaze farm right here. 
Um, oh, this is dangerous. This is so dangerous. Oh, oh my gosh. Look at my hearts already. Holy cow. Hmm. Well, I did get one blaze rod. That can make a brewing stand, but it's not going to help me do the brewing. I can't take hits like that. I really can't. Oh, this is so stupid. I need to not do this. Um, how do I get in? Oh, well, some of them spawned. Okay. All right, I'm just going to have to do this systematically. Oh, jeez, they're shooting me from that way. Okay. Let me try this with a bow. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, oh, the nether. Oh, nether. I do not like you at all. Holy cow. They're hitting me from every direction here. Every direction. Oh, I'm three and a half hearts. Holy cow, this chicken's probably not the best food I should have brought with me. Ooh, how many is that? Okay, I have eight. That's enough of those for now. Oh, holy cow. Oh, I should not have come in here. I should have brought my golden apple with me. Is there going to be an interior to this one? Or is this all just, um, these outside hallways? Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Okay. Block, block. 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 Oh. <laughs> uh, let's see if there's an interior to this thing where I can find some nether wart. Okay, this is... Oh, usually this is where it leads to the inside, but this is blocked off. Oh, I hope this isn't the end. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> oh, there's... If there's no interior to this thing, I'm going to be a little upset. And I cannot find a part of this thing that's inside. That's like a, a, an interior. Jeez. Oh, okay, let me, let me get safe and regroup. Uh, let me run past all of these guys. Oh lordy lordy lordy. Oh no no. Whoa! That almost sent me into the lava. Oh no. No, 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 Okay, so let's take a look at the larger map and see if we can find... Well, now here, this looks like another one down here, even further away. Um, this looks a little bit more buried. See, see, this is the one we're on, and see, this is very exposed. So if I'm going to try to find some nether wart, I'm going to have to get past this one and over to this one. Um, Millie, I think I gave this a valiant effort. I think I would rather come back and try this another time. Because that close call there, that, that really kind of shook me up a little bit. And I kind of want to get back to the overworld. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Oh boy. Okay, I made it back home. I did get the blaze rods. I don't have any nether wart. But right now, I think I'm going to go grab me a tall glass of water and spend a few minutes in the fetal position. And then I'll come back and see what's next on the agenda. Okay, I feel a little bit better now. I've calmed down a little bit. So let's do something a little bit more pleasant. Let's go ahead and name our horse. I got several suggestions for a name for the horse. In fact, I got, let's see, four or five. I got six great suggestions. So I was trying to figure out how I was going to choose between all of those. There was one suggestion that came in from two different people. And both of those people said that I should name my horse No Name. <laughs> If you missed last episode, I sang a concert quality rendition of Horse With No Name while I was crossing the ocean. And both Lucky Lane and Kirtiana thought that it would be hilarious if I actually named my horse No Name. Now, like I said, there was five other great names that were suggested. So here's a possibility if you guys want me to do this. In the recent versions of Minecraft, they actually fixed horse breeding again so that you can actually breed faster and better and stronger horses. So maybe something that I can do in a future episode is to start doing some horse breeding and maybe we can use these other five names for some of our offspring. I don't know, what do you think? Let me know. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and name our first horse here, No Name. And there was another suggestion that came in here right at the last minute and that was to find me matey here, a mate. So I think I'm going to ride No Name over to the Westlands again real quick and see if we can't find us another dog. Oh, there's one over there. Wow, I searched way too long to find this. <laughs> oh, there's several of them. Wow, got a whole pack here. There you go. Look at you, you cute little thing. 
All right, let's get you home. All right, we need to color your collar so I can tell you two apart. Here you go, I'm thinking this light blue is gonna be absolutely perfect. Oh yeah, that looks fantastic. All right, you wanna go hang out over here with Mady? Come on, come on, there you go. Oh, look at you two, you look so great together. Okay, I feel like this episode's probably getting a little bit long, but there's something I absolutely need to get done this episode. And that recent little trip to the nether really solidified it in my mind that I need better gear. I went through the trouble of getting this full enchantment table, but I have no way to get XP to be able to actually use it. Well, for two episodes now, people have been telling me to make a mob farm. Zulgan Rage said to make a general mob farm up above the ocean. Tim Loves Milk wants me to make a creeper farm. And Doskalos wants me to make a mob farm at ocean level. I actually thought about those and I had a really neat idea to combine the creeper farm with the ocean level farm into one and then up above it put the general mob farm. But for this episode, I just need to get the mob farm done so that I can get some XP, so that I can survive my next trip to the nether to find nether wart. Ooh, this hardcore thing is a little stressful, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so I think I'm gonna bite the bullet and just build the big ugly mob farm in the sky because I think that is gonna be my best shot at getting experience points so that I can start leveling up my gear. I've got this whole chest of cobbled deep slate from mining down below, and that should be more than enough to actually make this mob farm. Now again, these things can be pretty ugly, and they're way up in the sky, so I don't want it like right here, because this area of our home is starting to look kind of nice, and I don't want to ugly that up. So if I put it nearby and actually make it useful, there's just going to be an ugly stain on the horizon somewhere. But I think that's just the reality of this game. But what I'm thinking right now is maybe on the other side of those roads. Let me pop back in my map here. So I think if we just kind of go onto the other side of the road here and we just kind of make it, maybe we can kind of make it over top of where these geodes here are. Yeah, that might be a good spot. Yeah, and maybe we can eventually make an amethyst crystal farm on that geode. And if our farm is right above it, it'll keep the chunks loaded. Yeah, that's actually a pretty good idea. Okay, so I'm going to get started on that. And this is going to be a super simple, basic mob farm in the sky. You can find, I don't know, maybe about 3.9 billion copies of this on YouTube if you want to make one for yourself. So let me go ahead and get this thing built. And I'll be right back. All right, so this mob farm is complete. Let me show you this. This is the big ugly mob farm in the sky. <laughs> Very basic setup. You can find these online everywhere. I got this nice little bamboo protective area here that I can stand in. Uh, it'll stop me from falling off the sides and it'll stop phantoms from getting me if I happen to uh, stay here for too long. And it's got a water elevator and a water drop chute all the way down to sea level. And this thing works really, really well. As you can see, I'm getting like tons of XP from this thing. And I'm getting plenty of drops from it as well. And there's some more. So I think this is going to be a great way to get XP and it's going to be a great way for me to level up all of my gear. Okay, well there is one last thing I want to do today before I end this episode. And I can't really find a good place to put it, so I'm just going to stick it right up here on top of our Nautilus shell. And that is, I want to make a little board of suggestions, things that I haven't been able to get to. Like I said in the last episode, I'm starting to get more suggestions than I can actually accomplish in a single episode. And I know I'm keeping track of them behind the scenes, but I want you to see that I'm keeping track of them as well. So real quick, I'm going to jot down some of the things I haven't gotten to yet, and then I can show them to you when I'm done. Okay, so I think that's where we stand. So I think that about does it. I think I'm going to call the episode here. We got a lot of stuff accomplished today. I know I've been at it for hours, many, many hours. And even though we still have some things on the list that I need to do, I feel like we're really knocking them out. So absolutely keep those suggestions coming. I'm loving every single one of them. And again, if we can't get to them in a single episode, we're going to start keeping track of them. And heck, we might even just have one episode that is just pure ketchup. And I don't mean the stuff that you dip your fries in. So thanks for stopping by. I had a blast making this episode, and I really hope you enjoyed watching it. And now please, down in the suggestions, I need to know what to do next episode. So anything you want to see me do, go ahead and throw those down there in the suggestions, and we'll get working on them next episode. Well, again, thanks for stopping by, and until next time, you take care of yourself, okay? Bye-bye.